So I wasn't sure how I wanted to start this lesson today <laughs> because it's really important that we talk about it. Um, and it's been a really long time since I've experienced this. And so um, as you traverse through your ascension journey, <laughs> you are going to continuously raise your vibration and frequency. And oftentimes we forget where we started. <laughs> And so it was a walk down memory lane for me uh, today. And what I didn't want to do is induce fear uh, through this chats um, because channeling already comes with a lot of layers as it is with fears of persecution, witch wounds, you know, societal programming, religious programming. <laughs> uh, a lot of people are already nervous about channeling aliens or, you know, entities and all these different things. But as we've already discussed, channeling has a wide variety of facets um, and capabilities, okay, depending on what, however you want to utilize channeling, okay? Uh, but if this is going to be in reference to um, working with other people, okay, when you are doing uh, sessions, uh, maybe you're getting paid to do them or you want to do them with your family members and your friends, I'm going to give you uh, what not to do, <laughs> okay, today because I have been there, done that, and it was it was very intense okay so when i first started giving akashic record readings i went to a facebook group and it had a lot of uh, people that were a little bit further into their journey and so it was a very comfortable place for me to practice my gifts because I knew that these persons already had a pretty good handle on what the Akashic Records were <laughs> and that they were going to give me feedback back, right? And so I started giving tons of free practice sessions. I gave about 60 over a three month period because it became my hyper focus. <laughs> it was like, I need to figure out how to become the best at this. Not from necessarily an egoic standpoint, but more so of like, I, I really want to help people at a very deep level. And so I want to amass a big uh, bag of tools and resources and the more practice that I get the better that I can hone my gifts and this is also when I was learning how to develop my psychic abilities I already had a background in psychology and so that gave me a little bit of uh, foundation because I was like oh I can always go back to the psychology stuff if the psychic things are coming through necessarily but that was a fear that didn't even need to be there because I've always been incredibly psychic as I'm sure you are as well and we don't give ourselves enough credit for what we were able to perceive <laughs> so what I didn't realize in doing all of those sessions back to back to back in such a short period of time was that I was going to make myself physically sick and not just physically sick, but like my soul was sick. It was like I was so incredibly drained and tired because everyone that I was giving sessions to was a mirror reflection of myself. Either things that I had already worked through or things that I was currently working through or things that I was going to work through. <laughs> and so it was making me do double the amount of shadow work because at that time too, I felt like it was my personal responsibility to transmute and alchemize things for others. I was not holding good boundaries, energetic boundaries, personal boundaries, uh, and I was taking on a lot of people's pain and anxiety. I was also not taking care of myself. This is before I knew a lot about the central nervous system and how important it is to ground and take care of your physical body and drink water <laughs> and have fun outside of the spiritual context. And when I say that, I mean um, shadow work. And to show we don't need to be doing shadow work 24 seven. Okay, fun is also a form of healing. <laughs> and so I had just doubled down and invested in making the uh, Akashic Records and doing so many readings like this a large chunk of my life and I was putting myself kind of on the back burner at the same time I was doing it for me <laughs> but I was doing it sometimes I wouldn't say for the wrong reasons but not being conscientious of all of the back end things that come with channeling and when you work in the Akashic Records it is a very very high frequency 
it can leave you very floaty okay, when you come out of it. And I was not giving myself enough time in between sessions either. I was just doing one back to back during the day. And so my 3D scape, my regular schmegular life was getting very, um, I wouldn't say out of control necessarily, but I was forgetting to do a lot of things like taking care of my home, doing things for my car. Um, it was like I was very like detached and kind of disassociated from self. And that's because of those high, high frequencies. Those are great to be in, but we cannot be in them all the time because it's, it's etheric work, cosmic work, galactic work. And we love that and that's beautiful, but we also signed up to be a human here and to have human experiences. <laughs> so we have responsibilities. Uh, many of us are caretakers, we have jobs, you know, all these different things. And so you have to find this balance between them. And you have to think too, I was processing through so much PTSD and trauma during that three, four month period <laughs> where I was just digging, 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 digging. And that was so incredibly hard on my body <laughs> because it is years worth of uh, emotions that needed to come up and my central nervous system had been activated for so long and fight or flight and all these memories. And even though the persons that I was working with have different experiences, their similar core wounds though. So I was being poke, 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 trigger, 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 back to back to back. And what I have realized thus far is you have a battery of what you're able to do and what you're able to hold with channeling. <laughs> now I can do so much more than I was able to in the past because I have worked on all of those foundational things that I needed to. Taking care of physical body, central nervous system, drinking water, uh, doing fun things like outside of the spiritual context, making sure that my 3D things are taken care of, spending time in nature. <laughs> all of these things that keep me in a good homeostasis balance allows me to uh, amplify my channeling gifts and do it for longer periods of time and also go much, much, much deeper within people's energy fields. <laughs> I can access information that is much farther back in their Akashic records because I take care of myself. I take care of my human, this avatar. <laughs> <laughs> so again, this is why we spent so much time in the beginning on taking care of your human <laughs> because that really does allow you to go so much higher in the etheric realms while still being very healthy and balanced here in this plane. And would I change what I went through during that period? No because it was a beautiful lesson. It really did help me work through a lot of things at an accelerated pace, but at what cost? <laughs> uh, but now I can teach others from this place of, hey, maybe we don't need to go so hard in the paint <laughs> towards channeling uh, when we are one working on things within ourselves already and that we came here to have certain experiences. And the more that you invest in your incarnation and in, in being the version of you who wanted to come here, <laughs> actually that's the opening towards your gifts, like really, really expanding because instead of you looking as your multidimensional self coming through your human, okay, you're actually your human looking through your multidimensional <laughs> self and you can take all of your beautiful life experiences and apply them to helping other people in the collective or helping your family members and your friends while still, again, feeling healthy and balanced and able to reach much greater aspects of the Akashic records <laughs> or your inner children, your teens, your different uh, timeline versions. Uh, it helps with manifesting. Uh, it's all of these aspects that we want to get into begins with you putting yourself first, your needs and your wants and your desires, and then helping other people. Okay. <laughs> and I say that in the context of if this is something that you want to help others with in sessions, you putting yourself first is going to be the most beneficial for them and for you. <laughs> so just remember to keep yourself in balance with self-care and self-love practices.